Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuang. Let's draw the head of Lingyulong today. Very few fossils of Lingyulong's head have been discovered, and they are broken, so when restoring its head, we used its close relatives, such as Diplodocus, as a reference to restore the broken parts of its skull. When drawing its head, we should pay attention to the following features. For example, its eye was at the top of its head, and there was a temporal fenestra behind the eye. Generally, the temporal fenestra of dinosaurs, behind their eyes was a square, but that of sauropods tilted downward, extending to the lower part of their eyes. Besides, when drawing the mouth of Lingulon, pay attention to the proportion of its mouth to its eyes. When drawing this kind of picture, we must notice the contrast relationship at all times. We need to observe and figure out the exact position of its mouth in front of its eyes. For instance, the corner of Lingulong's mouth was in front of its eyes. After knowing about the essentials, let's draw the head of Lingulong. First, let's determine the specific position of its head. Let's draw the part above its eyes here, and the front part of its nose here. In general, its head looked like a big shoe. The top of its head, from its nose to the position above its eyes, was a slightly crooked and concave curve. Then, let's draw its mouth. The front end of its mouth was downward. Only this part had teeth. The rear goes upward. And we stop its mouth here, where was the corner of the mouth. Just now, we mentioned the eye situated in this position. We can draw the eyelid, the eye socket, followed by the small round eye. Then let's draw its pupil. We can leave a tiny gap as the highlight. Above the eye, we can draw some fine lines because its upper and lower eyelids had a pouch-like structure. Backward, let's draw its temporal fenestra, which extended diagonally forward, unlike that of carnivorous dinosaurs. So we just draw a line to show it. Its temporal fenestra was generally like this. As the rear was flat, we don't need to draw it. Next, the back of its head was here which we can use dotted lines to draw. Because the skins here are connected, we can draw a bulge in this position. and its ear inside. Then, let's draw its lower jaw forward. The general shape of its lower jaw bone is like this. Here, we need to draw with soft lines. The bone is like this, but when it was alive, this piece was slightly thicker, wrapped by a layer of muscle. The front of its lower jaw was like this. After that, let's draw its beak. Generally, we believe that sauropods might have a beak-like structure that was not very big. And their teeth grew out of the beak. Actually, the beak might be hard specialized lips which made it easy for such animals to get leaves from trees. The teeth on its lower jaw were like this too. So we draw the front end of its mouth a beak-like structure. Now let's draw its nostrils. From the fossils, its nostrils are here, so in early restoration, nostrils were often placed here. Back then, it was believed that as sauropods were too large, they could move in the water only by making use of the buoyance of water, and the nostrils atop their heads helped them to stick their heads out of the water to breathe. But now we have a different opinion. 
Now we believe that they were terrestrial animals, and the nostrils atop their heads were for extending the nasal passages. The whole nasal cavity extended from the top of the head. The opening is here. A lot of evidence has shown that there were cartilages to fix their nostrils in this position. Therefore, we can conclude that the nostrils of this dinosaur were in this position. Here, we can slightly draw the traces of its ant orbital fenestra and orbital fenestra of sauropods had become very small, but there were still some traces of muscles. Now, let's add some details. We can draw some traces on its beaks. The skull fossil of Lingulong is not complete, but according to some fossils of other sauropods, generally, we find that each of its teeth corresponded to a bulge. A bit like this. Therefore, when we restore its beaks, we can add such bulges like his. Along the growth direction of its beak, we can slightly draw some growth marks, especially this part growing out of its skin, to make it look more textured. We can draw some thin lines around its lips to give it a soft texture. Lastly, let's slightly show its neck to make the picture relatively complete. Below, let's draw its throat. Good like this, we've finished drawing the head of Lingwilong.